So Funiko is a nice studio album. You probably all know that stuff, but I don't, so I don't care. I'm just kidding. Uh, Wunderkö is a ninth studio album by Björk. The album was supposed to be released in March 2015, but due to a leak. A leak? Ah, a leak. All right. I saw it a leak. You got it a pipe. Anyways. Björk and her team decided to release it on January 20th, 2015. Björk herself inaugurated the anticipated, anticipated release of the album through a statement on her official Facebook page. The album was written in 2013, that's pretty long ago, in, I, so until the album got released, if you know what I mean. The year Björk and her partner Matthew Barney broke up, yeah, I know about that, um, and it documents the progressive uh, detour, these words, Jesus, deterioration of the relationship and the subsequent overcoming of her pain. These two phases are symbolized by the wound and the healing of the wound. Maybe a happy end, I guess. I don't know, we see. I mean, the last track is called Quicksand. That doesn't sound like a happy end, but anyways. Producer Arca contacted Björk in late summer 2013 and they started working on the Beast of the Songs. On the Beast of the Songs? That's interesting. Re interestingly written. Um, then Björk wrote strings and choir arrangements and recorded them in Iceland. The album was mixed by the Hexen Cloak, who also made beats for one half of family. Okay. Cool. Um, Telegram is a remix album. You might want to react to that. Don't heard of that one. <laughs> You're gonna hate this whole reaction. I know you will. We'll see. Uh, nah, Alright. Let's get into it. Uh, how many people are we right now? I don't know. Uh, a couple of people. Damn. You're already on some... Some early stuff right there. I Exclusive content. No, just kidding. Um, the Beats. Oh, did I read that wrong? The Beasts? Oh. It's... I I got you. There's beast, not beats. Beast. Yo, you gotta correct that. Anyways. Alright, nine tracks. Uh, Wunikara, finally. I'm going to upload it later on uh, YouTube. So, if you're not going to be here all the time, just come back later. Alright? So, I'm gonna click on this. The first track, Stone Milka. And I guess we see. Damn. It's also a pretty long track, I guess. Um, yeah, we got 6 minutes and 50 seconds. That's, that's pretty long. But I will see what that track will do as the first behemoth of track. There's also one track, Black Legs, the fourth track, which is 10 minutes long. Damn, we're listening to a Swan Song or something right here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, love your reactions. Do you listen to any shoegaze? Yes, I do. I love shoegaze. I love me some, also some dream pop and noise rock. I guess that's something in between that. Love that. Also, uh, sometimes um, play around with a lot of effects with my guitar. It's a lot of fun. Shoegaze is so dumb, actually, in theory, but it's so fun to just do. And um, yeah, there's also no screaming. You just can get your vocals in. It doesn't matter how your vocals really sound. It's great. It's a great genre. I love it. Black Lake being 10 minutes long. We get through it. Come on. I listened to some like 30 and 40 minute Swans track. We also go on and get through this one. It's not going to stop me. Arcos production in this album is immaculate. I. No more talking. No more talking. No more chat reading. Bjork and Michael Jira need to collab. True. And Arco. I. So, the first track is called Storm Worker. Let's listen. Some double strings right here. A main violin. Some really nice reverb beats on this one. Damn, these 
These are amazing, man. Damn, that's those are some really beautiful strings. There's so much going on also in the production and some like backing things going on. Alright, we're gonna stop here for a second. But, but I gotta tell you, that there are so many strings. There are like maybe three different ones. A main cello, some... The cello demands silence. Yeah. Stomach alone is worth the price of admission. Yeah. I, I see that. Um, this track so far, I mean, we're not really deep into this track. We just listened to this one like two minutes and it's awesome. Right from the beginning. Those beats. Um, when I first thought about like Arker's production, um, it's abrasive, sometimes highly experimental and electronic. But right here, it um, really has also the the Vespertine vibe to it with those like little micro beats, not doing too much with them, but they are there to get a chilly feeling, um, to f feel a little bit more colder. I guess this album also makes a sense in that um, with the lyrical content. Um, I thought that the chorus was very enduring. Um, Show me emotional respect and I have emotional needs. I wish to synchronize our feelings, all our feelings. So I guess it's at the beginning of the like the concept of the breakup um, or the divorce. And I wish to synchronize our feelings. So understanding another person, so her husband in that sense, um, or previous husband. And yeah, that's pretty harsh in that uh, songwriting. Um, before that, it's a typical Björk songwriting, if you know what I mean, you have really have to get into it, because sometimes, just for me also as a foreigner, I don't really get all the words um, in this, uh, I guess, wrapped up product she's trying to get out of here, and, um, but I guess I will get it with some more listening, who can chant, who has shut down the chances? Hmm. So, while this is right here live, I'm thinking a lot in between um, those ch um, little pauses I do. So if you see in my reactions that I do a little bit pause, I'm going to cut that. Sometimes I just think like one minute about like, what I really listen to and read through all the lyrics again. Um, I don't want to do that right here. Um, I want to have a little bit of a flow. So I guess we'll move on, but it's beautiful so far. Um, I really love the different um, aspects of the beat coming into this one. It's amazing. Um, also, if I don't read any message in the chat, I'm sorry, uh, but I will. I will get to that. <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of the last track on Vespertine. Also those chord progressions are really interesting, they are so different. So powerful without being too complex. That's true, yeah. I thought it's going to be complex. But it's so sweet. Well, yes, it's emotional, but the uh, core progressions and just the feeling I get right now. It's not really something I expected, but I love it. I'm thinking also about like was like all the live things also with like real strings. Yeah, I mean this track also makes really sense as a first track. Alright. 
That was a first trick stone milker. Um, yeah. I mean, that they put like a two minute string out to it, it was perfect. Um, and it's just like such a leap back to the Vespertine era, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't know if anyone really think that. I saw some in the comments that they were talking about Vespertine and stuff like that. Also about um, Unison, the last track on Vespertine. But it's so different also from the first track on Vespertine. We had this like mysterious, um, really messed up um, um, track. As the first one, it was so different. Um, but damn this right here is just so different also from a first track you really get like the unison at the beginning if you know what i mean and uh, it makes sense and i really love that um also someone talked about uh talked about accessible uh, accessiveness or like being accessible i mean yeah accessible is also a really weird word using that in Björk's music um but I guess in some ways it makes sense, maybe musically. Um, but her lyrical and vocal style is just so different. And right here, also Björk really uses her full voice, uh, which makes sense. Maybe not using full power, full throttle on this one makes sense in that sense. Um, yeah. So. And I grind the supermarket listening to it. Good times. Was it playing like the radio or something? That would be cr kind of crazy. Um, it's like climbing up to the top of a mountain and finding nothing there. That would that would suck. I mean, I guess a divorce sucks. So makes sense. She did perform live, perform live with strings. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, I would love to see that live, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think that that as the first track is just genius. Um, I obviously also going to jump more into the lyrics. I thought that the verse after the first chorus right here also really made sense. Uh, what is it that I have that makes me feel your pain? Like not my pain, your pain. Um, like milking a stone, like nothing there also makes sense in that sense um, to get you to say it i was thinking about what is it she really talks about right here the lyrics um but then yeah at my phones everybody i know hates beard <laughs> yeah my father also hates beard that's that's hilarious um but yeah i saw that this one was genius um, as a first track. I don't think it's a masterpiece as a first track. Maybe it will be with uh, some further listens, uh, but in that sense, I'm going to give this one a nine. Still fucking great. Anyways, let's get to the second track, which is called Lion Song. Um, some people also talked about this track being pretty genius, so really excited for that one also. Um, so let's listen. Yeah, I'm going to listen to this one, of course, um, alone again. I always do that. So no worries. Pretty different vocal style. There's some electronics in this one. Great strings carrying this uh, melody right here. Imagine if this was playing at Lidl in 2007. Yeah. Frustration peak, anything peak for clarity. Um, yeah, I guess it was the first 
section kind of of this track really interesting um first the strings are really harmonizing with um the vocals after that it kind of um ripped apart of that um, kind of vocals if you know what i mean and did its own thing but after that it's like it's um a little bit behind the vocals um which takes some really different uh, voicing styles and also a little bit of space in between vocals and um, arrangements and stuff like that. Great um, arranging right here. Um, also, there are some electronics first that I heard, um, and I kind of like think they are. The beats on this one are really a little bit too much, like West between actually. Um, it's like a really I leap back to that era, and I think that's great because I love this um, It's one of my favorite albums now after listening to that one countless times. So, um, Line Song is a girl for sure. Uh, I love it. It's the first listen. <laughs> but if that's a girl, I guess, yeah. Um, I love how really the vocals are um, so damn. Especially the auto tune vocal sections out there. I do. At the beginning, right in the intro, uh, but yeah, I love this one right here. It's a different style, but I love it so much and makes it such a unique song in Björk's entire discography. Yeah, it's unique, um, but I guess it also has an um, idea of Espatine, if that sense. Um, makes that sense? I don't know. You're all the Björk listeners, you listen to Björk since years, right? That's my first time. But, anyways, um, I love this track so far. <laughs> Ah, here the vocoded. It's kind of like backing vocoded sections, yeah. There's some like electronic scratches and those percussion stuff like that. It's amazing. If there are any music videos, I'm going to look at them later. Well, that was a weird chord, but that was amazing. <laughs> a little bit of stabbing in between. I love that. I like this track even more than the first one, to be honest. Yeah. There are so many also archers in this album, but yeah, there was Line Song, also a great track. Um, also, the lyrical content on this one right here, um, it makes me feel like... Uh, the kind of like emotional distress of being like confused with your current situation in a sense like that if you know what i mean maybe you will come out of this maybe you won't so i am not to the bother either way i refuse it's a sign of maturity to be stuck in complexity i demand all clarity if you know what i mean but um, i guess it's a really really good track right here also musically but um also like the joy peak human peak for special peak anything peak for all clarity. Um, one feeling at a time it reached its peak, then transformed. These abstract complex feelings, I just don't know how to handle them. So there's like, she's getting like overloaded with um, feelings and stuff like that. I mean, it's just in a situation like that, uh, it makes sense and sometimes you don't even know what to do. So it really shows this right here in this track and it's um, perfect in that sense. But yeah i love this one um so i like love this one even more than the first one to be honest um which also means that i think from a first listen 
this is um, a 9 to a 10. Uh, I also think that this is maybe going to be a grower. I guess we see that. Um, also, if you want to know my like further thoughts later, um, at the end of the video I'm going to upload, there's always a, an, an additional um, thoughts kind of section, and then I'm going to talk about it, as you maybe know. But yeah, great track. Uh, I love that one. So let's see what the search track will do, uh, which is called History of Touches. Great, great title. Um, I, I can guess what this also will kind of like mean. Also, if you think about uh, Vespertine, there was a lot of romantic stuff, um, love, um, and kind of like the whole feeling of being in love while well, it's so sweet, gentle, and also wintry sometimes even, and uh, mysterious, like uh, the mysteriousness and complexity of like feelings. And this right here also isn't that, but just in a darker side of that or way. Makes sense. Um, I love this one, the third track. You love this one? All right. Let's see if I love this one. Just kidding. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. Damn. Very, very electronic. I wake you very underrated. Alright. HOT sample, yet so complex. The instrumentalists are intense on this one, I would say. Um, it makes sense that it's complex. There's not much, though. Just the complexity of this one idea of electronic um, weirdness. But it feels so familiar. I don't know why. Like, the electronics on this one, especially, like, at the beginning of this one, pretty interesting. And, and this one right here even feels like even maybe more heavier than the first two tracks maybe it makes sense um, that it is so silent with just one instrumental um, and an electronic and also the verses like this is like directly into the thoughts without any I don't know if you know what I mean, but if you write something down and you don't really think about um, if it even suits something like that, Björk is sometimes even maybe a person who just writes, just writes the thoughts, not even thinking about anything different like that. And this one right here is like directly maybe into that. Um, um, of the Tom Yorks, Don Carlos. I've never listened to the solo material, if you mean this um, solo material. Um, I didn't even know where to begin with this one um, instrumentally, but lyrically it's... Um, I can't really get this one word out of my brain. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, right at this moment I would just cut think about like for one minute and then I will come back but I can't do this in a live stream I guess you just have to wait um, one minute it's raining outside by the way that's cool all right I can't remember anyways let's move on compressed into a second all with us here as I Yeah, maybe straightforward, but I feel like you're right there at the moment. 
Straightforward makes sense in the way she uses words like this one and things like that, uh, if you know what I mean. But um, like you're right there at the moment, um, kind of maybe even watching this scene in a way, and you get the feeling of that, of uncomfortable um, feeling, stuff like that, uh, while at first it's about love and things like that. But then this is our last time together. It also reminds me of that one scene in uh, The Wolf of Wall Street, actually, which is weird to talk about, uh, about a movie like that by Martin Scorsese when we um, talk about Björk. Um, but uh, there was this one scene like it also was the last time together and it's been things like this right here like the last touch in that um, with the two um, married couple the married couple right there um, and it's this weird feeling that they kind of like are in the situation where there has to be love but they don't have to or they doesn't have that and there's this melancholy of thinking about the past and you don't really do that in a moment like that um, like being waken up in this uh, night and then but having like touches and then just thinking about the history of the touches they had as a last one and i guess that's um, pretty hard but uh yeah i think that this track was really good um instrumentally not a masterpiece i guess but i really appreciate those electronic simplicity of this one right here and i can maybe see why people call this track underrated especially for just the feeling it gets you from the lyrical side and things like that so i'm going to give this one something between an eight and a nine yeah um, history of touches is raw for me. Yeah, I, see, I also see that, but in a good way, because it's a raw thought right here. Um, voyeuristic. Hmm. I'm not really sure what um, word I'm really looking for, to be honest. The production feels very nocturnal, and just how all your emotions and memories seem to strike you harder at night. Yeah. History trust is wrong for me. The lyrics are here among her most intimate and private. Sonically, it is my favorite, but the lyrics get me. Yeah, I also see that. Um, but let's see what the next track will do. Uh, it's a 10 minute track Black Lake, the fourth track. So let's listen. Maybe talking about the children. I have to stop right here because I want to get this hard. Um, our love was my womb, but our bond has broken. Um, that reminds me um, of a lot of um, stories I heard, um, especially with couples or married couples, when they get children just to be closer to each other and having more time for each other and things like that. Um, if you know what I mean, if they like kind of like take the time for their children. Um, but I don't have to, I don't have to read the chat right now because I don't want to get this out of my head. Damn, what I was, what was I thinking about? Man, shit. Oh yeah. Uh, and if the children kind of like grow up, it's a lot of times they just um, divorce each other because there is not a bond, like the bond when the children are small and they are all together and happy family, but then they grow up and that's sometimes then not the case anymore. And um, it kind of like gets me the feeling of that. But I guess we'll see with the further this track goes, the lyrics. Um, Take off your shoes for this one. I was thinking about that. I, I just read that and was like, huh? A black leg, I guess. Yeah. Unquestionable masterpiece. Yeah. The music video is amazing. 
I, I will watch them afterwards, I guess. Um, but it's, let, let's continue. Wait too long for just like 40 seconds to do this too. How about what should I do with videos? Sorry, that is not possible through YouTube. That will strike me down to hell if I do that. Um, I mean, last time when I was streaming, uh, my stream was taken down. Was just listening to music. If I get some like music videos into this one, nope. Maybe I could I could cover them, um, so you don't see them, but I see them. But I guess that sucks for you. And when I do a first listen, I don't want to see the videos actually because I get distracted. People have to stop thinking children are marriage glue. That's so true. That was straight what I was talking about. Uh, and so many people do that, especially young couples. Damn, those dissonant kicks. They're so far away, but it's amazing. These strings remind me of a composer, but I don't remember which one. A little bit Kevin Penkin, maybe. Yeah, Kevin Penkin, for sure. Oh damn, I like how the jumps are building up. Yeah, it's very poetic. What's up, Mikey? Genius. Damn, you can hear some really distant hi hats in the left. Also, it's the right side. So detailed. So multi faced. Yeah, it's very multi faced. There's so much going on um, in between the source verses, and how they are um, like highlighted right here really makes sense. Because after that, there's always a little bit of a, like a small interlude of like a couple of seconds doing some, like sometimes Arca does a swell with some strings um, or the, not the strings, the uh, beat, or, um, like some arrangements of the strings come in as a swell or something in between that. Was the Fasso reaction ever make its way back to YouTube? Um, I, I will probably figure that out how to do that. Um, Maybe it's going to be very um, short in the music section, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, but I was also thinking about like, um, I don't want to just like listen to this, like the situation of like who was the, whose fault was it? Um, because I mean, we weren't warranted in the situation, I guess, but of just the things I, um, read right here there's a kind of like the i forgot the guy's name actually um her previous husband's name um but you you fear my limitless emotions i guess it's a, a very common problem like men have of just like um not kind of um getting along with the emotions maybe some partners have or something and it's like too much and they can really handle it that i love you too much is also something in that sense that makes sense um 
sorry, rebelled, destroyed the icon. So there's also a side of like um, how Björk tells or um, like uh, talks about um, that she maybe also did something wrong. But yeah, um, I did it for love, honored my feelings. You portrayed your own heart corrupted that organ. Also, in that sense, it's something in a different side again, a different emotional side. Um, every verse is a different emotional landscape, but all of them are just heartbreaks as well. Yeah, that made, that makes sense, really. And then again, talking about her family. Family was always our sacred mutual mission, which you abandoned. Also then, um, it's often the case that some like uh, parents are pretty distant. You have nothing to give, your heart is hollow. I'm drowned in service, no hope in sight of ever recorded eternal pain and horrors. Damn. Jesus. Uh, uh, let's continue. Artsy, fancy, experimental movie he screamed. Yeah, that could make sense. To be honest, this track shouldn't be shorter. It really makes sense to be this long as this. This page is the space is very much needed because every verse is so different and like um The way she say reckoning. Yeah. I love her voice. I love her accent. Read on Rolling the R. And we got a lengthy outro also right here. Kate Bush reference was a rocket. I think I didn't listen to enough Kate Bush to understand that one, I guess. It will be interesting to hear your thoughts on for several ones you've had her entire catalog. Uh, I mean, I did a reaction, uh, but it's blocked in USA and Canada. I think, if not even more. Um, I I will try to upload it once again, as I was saying. Alright, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, I, I guess I will upload that once again. But yeah, that was um, Black Lake. Genius once again. Very different once again. Like, the first two tricks were pretty different while being um, sonically different and just the feeling I got off of it. Um, uh, but I thought also that the second track line song so far was the most um, vocally heavy one, while Black Lake at the end, right, at the eight words was or at the end of the seventh verse even also was very very heavy but yeah i love this one also as the longest track it shouldn't be shorter than 10 minutes i think it really squeezes um every single the thing out of the stone yo was that a vulnicura um anyways yeah uh i think that one was a nine Yes, sometimes I think it could be a little bit more instrumentally. The strings are more a texture, not a really a melody. Maybe it's because it was a little bit too lengthy sometimes, which makes sense. But I really love those beats on this one. Those were amazing. And sometimes the swelling in between that was genius. So it really deserves a 9 right here. Um, I guess not every track can be a 10. But yeah, I love that one. So let's see what the fifth track will do, which is called Family. Someone was talking about that also. For me, family has kind of healing abilities also. And then, oh, that's interesting. Maybe we get a shift at the halfway of this album. Um, it's like the midpoint of this album, and it's called Family, the midpoint. You know what I mean? Maybe it makes sense in that. Oh, I'm thinking too much into this one, but I guess it's Björk, so it could be. 
It's also produced by the Hex and Cloud um, They were talking about uh, in the description. Family, Mouse Mansion, and HOT are my favorite tracks on Volume Crew, I think. Cool. Um, the second half of Family takes me directly into the sky after such darkness. That's great. So maybe it's really like a transition. But maybe I see. Let's just, let's just jump right into it. Come on. Let's listen. Family. An eight minutes track also. Exciting. Arika. Yeah, this is dark. Those strings right here could be out of a, like a horror or a drama movie or something. Kind of reminds me of some Kenji Kawai strings. Atmospheric instrumental outro this track. Hey, no spoilers. Just kidding. Do you think that in this track Birk uses a sonorism technique? I love the Kendrick verse mid song. Really? Even reminds me of some parts on Forsara. I can't remember which one. Like some of these, like they feel almost like some compositions for movies. Like this right here um, feels like a thriller movie where like the main uh, protagonist gets um, chased by the antagonist for the first time. And it's just like crazy distress and it's heavy. And right here, then Arca sings about. How will I thing us out of this sorrow? Will the safe bridge for the child out of this danger? Danger. Like, talking about that father, mother, child, love triangle as a danger. That's... Yeah, free fall and victimhood, you got it. Right. Damn. Wow. And also that transition into this uh, right here. Genius. Damn. Yeah, free for me. Yeah, y'all you you got that. You all got that, right? True. You see my point, but wow. Are those electronics? Sounds like quas. Warm of sound or wall of sound here, it really makes sense, but it's beautiful. The vocals are all over the place, but it's perfect. has to be there. F first I always thought it was Icelandish. Icelandic. When I was listening to debut, I guess. But yeah, this part is amazing. 
how it slowly fades away. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, family right here. I see that there are three parts, not two. First the horror, then the thrill, and after that the release. Yeah, that's that's the whole movie right here, and just the fifth track. Um, so I thought that this one was perfect right here. Um, so I guess this one is um, as a first listen ten. Yeah. I guess my favorite so far between lines song. Nice. Let's listen to the next track, the sixth track, Not Get. Let's go. Very different. And I didn't even notice for how our love kept me safe from death. Damn, it sounds so strange. Sounds like some French composition, some French movies. I love French movies, by the way. Don't remove my pain, it's my chance to heal. could easily fuck up this part with those um, electronics, but it works so well. Amazing. Has any of your 10 ratings ever changed after repeated listens? Um, sometimes I maybe uh, didn't feel as strong about some tracks. Hold up. That's, a, that's an important question right there. Has any of your 10 ratings ever changed after repeated listens? So I had some occasions where like some albums I first thought were tense, I would thought yet yeah, still close to a masterpiece. So if you think about my ratings, then it's a, like a decent nine or a strong nine. Um, but I guess it changes pretty often um, with further listens. For example, sometimes I just get sick of an album where I still love it, but I just can't listen to it anymore. I also have that. Um, I need to watch this again to see your opinion about family is the same, but it's like an open door to another dimension. Yeah, it was uh, like five minutes ago. <laughs> but um, yeah, right here, this track is a little bit different. It gets me into a feeling of uh, it's not as dark as the uh, um, previous two tracks or one track. Um, while it's not as emotional directly, um, things like that as the first three tracks, it's very really different. It really flexes also the muscles Arkha has right here with like the production style. It's amazing. And um, also talked about like how these electronics work so well, why they could easily uh, be distracting or not suiting those um, strings in that sense. But yeah, this, this one's great. Let's move on. But uh, a 10 never went to an 8, to be honest, I don't think. Those are strings. You're right. My bad. It first um, sounded like some organs. Deaths. Deaths. This outro doesn't feel like she's saying the same line seven times. Yeah, because the instrumental is always different. 
especially his percussion. Like, different again. Yeah. And there's so much detail. Go to a whole of BUC into this one. It really sounds like organs, actually, those strings. Um, I don't know why. Honestly, I hear that very, 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 very in both songs and the back leg. Yes, I was drinking, all right. Am I not allowed to drink? <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I thought that this track was also really good. It's not my favorite, actually. Well, I think that it's um, instrumentally really impressive uh, with all those different um, ideas of electronics and um, organic sound, if you know what I mean. Do you actually call strings like organic sound? Mm, anyways, yeah. <laughs> Not the... Yes, there is some organ-like feeling, but anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah, still a great track. It's not my favorite so far, but still intense. It's amazing. It has uh, kind of the, the free fall, kind of for sorrow feeling again. Um, pretty, pretty intense from the previous track to go into something like this. Well, yeah, it maybe makes also sense to do something like that. Um, but lyrically, I will go even deeper into this, I guess, abyss of lyrics. Um, there's a lot about like death and love, two very different things, but I guess in this sense of this album, it makes sense. Um, but, oh my God, line song next. We already had that one, but yeah. It's quite an unsettling song for me, yes, especially the beginning with those weird sounds. I can't really remember those. That's where we're in. No, that's, a, that's a not. next track. Hold up. Yeah, at first it really sounds weird, but actually I like listening to not get for six minutes, you really get used to those instruments and at the end they feel like organs. <laughs> but... Um, like, it also gets me the feeling that those strings really got so messed up in the sound that it really feels like organs, and organs always has these, like, villain kind of feeling, or also death, or, um, like, tragic feelings. Um, well, it was great. I would hate to be the spouse of a popular musician who writes a version of the truth. I'd I don't really get what you mean with that. I would hate to be the spouse of a popular musician who write the version of the truth. I, 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 I guess my English is not working right now. Um, we well, current strings sound amazing. Yeah, they're also very different. Like if you think about Vespertine strings, they are always pretty in the same sound or idea, um, or the same orchestra or arrangement. But yeah. I guess this one is great. Was great also, but let's see what the next track will do. Uh, featuring Anoni and Anochni. I'm not sure. Let's listen. Seventh track, a tone dance. Each other's <coughs> hand is Musician who puts their private lives into public music. Oh. I am, I'm no, I got you. Very biophilia, that's true. Yeah. <coughs> of these, like, plucking strings, there were so many, and, um, Video, but I always love them. Gets me a really hard up for sort of feeling, also from just a feeling. Because when I was always thinking about for sort, it was like some deep, dark force. It really sounds like that. Oh, and jungles. Fungal City vibes, true, there were some plugs like that, right? 
I'm not 100% sure. I listened to Fosora like last time, like maybe damn some nice panning kind of. I don't even know what it is, like white noise. And those chord progressions sounds very. Will you react to Arca 4 and 5? Yes. Also, Arca self type armor as well. Maybe. People want that. I guess I do a discography too. There was also an Ononi feature on Walter, I guess. Was it Walter? Pretty British. Do you say dancing at Brit in Britain? Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, like Noni's performance on this one, actually, um, especially on the chorus uh, where um, I'm not going to misgender again because I got hate because of that. Because then Noni went to some like lyrics like that. Um, no one is a lover alone, don't most hearts fear their own home. You are my second hemisphere, hemisphere, the atoms of dancing, dancing. There's a little bit of a joy in this track, which makes us a very different feeling from all the other tracks so far on Woody Um But do I think that it's um, not supposed to be on this album? Maybe, but I still think this one is a great track, just like as a standalone track on this album, not as a like grander scream, if you know what I mean. Um, Björk did a do all strings arrangement and even conducted them in the studio. Yeah, I know, but um, it's always like great to do something like that. Um, and she's very talented in that. The flame of desire, yeah. Um, was on that super memorable track, my juvenile. Actually, I can't remember. <laughs> Super memory. Um, I'm sorry. But yeah, let's move on and finish up this trick, I guess. We got two minutes left. Um, I guess we're gonna get a like lengthy outro, but they are always like lengthy outro on this album so far, and they are always great. I've never listened to much of an outside of Volta. So. I always thought that lyrically this would perfectly in with the themes of the Bifidia album, visualizing rumors and love as a bunch of atoms dancing, moving in harmony together. Very true. Oh damn. Listen to those strings, eh? She confirmed that in her just podcast. Alright, okay. took too much time to be finished. I can imagine. Yeah, this track right here. A Tom Dance. Great one. Um, maybe for this album a little bit too weird. Gets me also a little bit out of this feeling of this album or the flow. But um, I mean, I'm a person who likes really the flow of an album and uh, things like that. But this one is uh, really a standout also for this album to do something different. And I appreciate it. There's also a different approach on all the instrumentals and it's again different. Um, and that's great. So yeah, I guess this one was also pretty genius in that sense. Yeah, I'm going to give this one an eight. If it would be on a different album, maybe a nine even. So standalone in nine. You get me. Something between an eight and a nine. So let's see what's the next track we do. It's the second last one. Uh, this one was a favorite of someone. Well, one of the favorites. So let's see what this will do. Um, my throat was stuffed. My mouth was... Uh, I'm not reading it. Let's just listen. 
Is there a German phrase that you would use to describe Björk's music? Eigenartig. had those in another track on this album. Our song about losing our voice, yeah that makes sense. There was some water? Before water? Was a really big part of this bridge right here. I guess this was my favorite part of this track so far. I like the approach on the first couple of verses, but I couldn't really get into it. Maybe with some further listens, I will. Um, the visual for the song is so good. What do you mean with visual? You mean the video? The music video? I don't know. But yeah, um, I saw that this track is in concept very good and <clears throat> also very interesting to talk about like especially that's like career ending for like musicians of course um so um and especially like with Björk having such a beautiful voice if she would lose that um no that no just no so i really appreciate this track and the songwriting and the idea um just at the beginning i wasn't really into the sound but right here with those beats and this abrasive not abrasive abrasive is just like aggressive i'm not meaning that more like um, noised sound and um getting this art pop in a way always like Björk uses um she had that on Vespertine a little bit and late on Volta really uh, where she, she was reusing those like um, pretty noisy beats and something like that and right here Arca is a perfect a perfect pick so I really enjoy this one and I accidentally skipped we get back <laughs> I don't know why. Wow. wow. Damn. Yeah, I think that Mos Mantra was um, really genius in this um, track list. One of my favorites. Um, Something between an 8 and a 9 still, but more 9. Because I really love the last part right there, the swells and the strings arrangements all over this one. The experimental beat all over this one was amazing. Arco did themselves. But yeah, great track. Uh, I love this one. And um, it's really different always. Like, not one track is really like one another while being in a genre. Um, like a centerpiece of an idea uh, while I think um, since the sixth track not get it gets a little bit uh, more uh, apart from the concept of this album <clears throat> but I don't know why I got so much pain right now anyways let's see what the last track will do which is called quicksand the ninth track uh, let's listen to them let's do it wow 
well, okay? Pretty straightforward last track right here. Actually really surprised me for being like this. Quicksand reminds me to ELO. Kinda no one, but also a little nearest in this one. The earliest song written for Willy Cole. That's interesting. Those little vocal chants that are really like little are so amazing also on this one. Analyze those strings. And it ends abruptly. I guess it makes sense in quicksand maybe to end abruptly. Interesting move. Alright. That was the last track. Um, quicksand. Yeah, this one was amazing, like those strings were really swelling and all of the plays, like the drums, not my favorite of this album, um, or as just like the percussion um, production, but I love those strings. Akko was amazing on this one, the writing, pretty different. Uh, there's a little bit lack of uh, hope on this one while being pretty realistic, yeah. It makes sense kind of like with the one um, with Gabriel like talking about that. Um, I didn't really saw like being about her mother. Um, wasn't like uh, her mother wasn't there some kind of story. Didn't she die of because of some like um, kind of illness? I'm not really. I don't really remember. So while I love this album very much. What did Mikey say? So while well, I love this album very much, it doesn't end as strongly as it came in, and it doesn't feel like it closes on its concept as a whole. Very open-ended. Yeah, that's really also one side I wanted to talk about. Like the first five tracks really have this concept, but I guess it's not really necessary to end on that because Family really talked about anything. Black Lake was a centerpiece, really getting in each verse about each a different emotional like landscape she was in in that sense so i guess four more tracks in that sense weren't really necessary and experiencing just like with some sound around and stuff like that and also ending on quicksand like that makes sense and i guess i like that so quicksand is something also between an eight and a nine for me but more than eight but yeah great album i love this one uh, the way I've seen it, put its grief can be unpredictable and the abrupt end shows how you can feel okay one second and heavy with grief the next. Yeah, I mean, that's just human, I guess. Um, that, like, there's no really transition in between, I guess. Not always. Um, but, yeah, this one was great. You need to rate out of 20, haha, since you rate between numbers a lot. Uh, should I even between how run hundred? <laughs> I mean, mostly like on my first reactions, uh, it really changes just like a little, little bit in between each one. Sometimes an eight can be a nine after some listens or seven. It just like it depends really. Um, so getting more numbers in between that, I could do that, but I don't think it's really necessary. But yeah. Um, first thing, I guess, like the most people are gonna leave now and they're gonna say no, thank you for being here and experiencing this album with me right here. Um, hold up, I always need some like music in the background. I'm a person like that. 
Um, last time we played some like video game music, so I'm gonna do that again, I guess. So let's go with this one. Or some Hollow Knight. All right, and let's talk a little bit about this album. Just a little bit, not long. Uh, my thoughts weren't really long. I, I even started with them. Um, oh, it is about her mother. Is that her mother? Her mother suffered a heart attack that left her in a coma for a week. Oh, damn. That's not good. Um, I feel like Mouth Mandrake clicks and, and I would say Atom Dance 2 doesn't fit the well in the album. Yeah, I see that. The stream was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. You need to rate out of 20. Um, already there, right? Said, but yeah. Um, I guess then the last trick is going to be uh, 17. Is that fine? 70 out of 20. Oh my god, I love Hollow Knight. You gamer too? Yes. Not as much as some years ago, so I don't didn't really like play it like recent games and then came out because I didn't really have the time for that or really the interest. I always buy games, but I don't play them. <laughs> and I still haven't finished the ring, for example. But yeah, for example, Hollow Knight is one of my favorite uh, ones right there. But yeah, um, I think that Lion Song and Family, Black Lake, Stonemaker also are my favorites. Like, the first half was amazing. And was family perfect and for the first half, so um, I kind of guess that it really makes sense to see that one as the first half and then as the second half as a double sided album. Um, and yeah, what else is there? I want to go even more deeper into the lyrics. Um, sometimes I even uh, read through these, but sometimes they are not um, reviewed or something I don't really like. Sometimes also how they really explain those things. Um, but I, I think just like talking about it and just like thinking about what could it mean makes sense on Genius and it's fun. Um, I also was thinking there was sometimes a little bit of a different cover. Like it also was a Marvel Mantra. Like this cover, what is this cover? Does anybody know? The first half is like the pain and the hurting, and then she begins to heal and move on. Wulni Kura, won't healing. Aha. Yes. Thanks, Andre. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I guess. Um, I will cut this little stream right here. So yeah, um, here we are with some additional thoughts for uh, Vulnikurum. What a beautiful album. What a heartbreaking album. Um, especially the first half, uh, like um, in the stream at the end I talked about so much like with uh, the community about this album and stuff like that. And I have to tell you, that was so much fun doing that on a live stream. And yet this album is really like on this first half, really conceptual, um, straight to the point. It gets you into the feelings really directly and that in a beautiful way. So I think that the first half of this album is the first thing I'm going to talk about in these additional um, thoughts right here. So we're going to start with Stone Milk and Lion Song. They're pretty like in the same feeling for me. They really get you into the feeling um, of this landscape of emotion. Um, that Björk was in at the kind of like the time um, after the breakup and um, with like heavy strings and some also some direct vocal changes um, and especially line song is really different for Björk and her voice and like so many different cover versions and ideas that were so beautifully and perfectly um, just produced also through Arca on the side right there and the um, orchestrations 
beautiful. Um, so Berg really outdid herself right here on the first side, especially on the first two tracks. Then with History of Touches, it kind of like gets into another region of like the feeling that you maybe have right there. But the lyrical content is just like one of the most perfect ones of this whole album. So that's why I really appreciate that one. Black Lake is like the centerpiece of the first half that really gets you into like the multi-faced emotions that you have in the kind of like um, the stuff that went through right there in um, very philosophical abstract ways of writing that really came up on that track in 10 minutes what a behemoth right there but you can really feel that it shouldn't be any less because um, there was also many space in between every verse there were like eight or nine verses and yeah that was great also family went into that with like eight minutes um, which is a probably like a very different and more like not directly track of the, the first half but it also really transitions um, in between those and as like the title says of the track it really makes sense in that content but also makes uh, the feeling of moving on right there um, kind of the reason why the second half uh, with not get a tom dance move mantra not get um, and quicksand really are different for example, if you think about um, um, the very weird and um, outer-worldly Atom Dance and Not Get, they were very different. Um, getting some like, electronic sides also into this one right here, or Mauve Mantra with that abstract beat and stuff like that, or the last track Quicksand getting even more abstract with like those really f almost like fucked up, uh, like a last half of that one and really gets you into a weird headspace right there and really makes sense as the last track and then abruptly ends at the end which always like just have me just like sitting there and thinking wow what an end. But Mouth Mantra was my favorite of the second half right there while the other tracks um, instrumentally and maybe also um, in the whole context of an album really didn't grab me as much as the other ones while you went in such like an emotional distress on the like first five tracks. Um, yeah, it kind of makes sense with that and to get a whole album on just an EP or something like that, it makes sense. But still, um, I think that the effort was really there, especially with also the track um, At Home Dance. Um, also with the feature of Anochni was there yeah, was uh, like really perfect and some great feature while I wasn't really crazy about that one on um, Volta but that one was crazy perfect um, so yeah there was kind of like my additional thoughts um, I didn't want to delve too much into the lyrical content I think they really um, did that perfectly on the stream um, so yeah I also really have to um, heavily cut this uh, um, reaction right here that was kind of like pretty sad uh, because of like all the copyright stuff right there is uh, like always very harsh on the Björk side. So it was like blocked in 200 to 300 countries, I think. And uh, yeah, it was mental. But yeah, I hope you will still um, enjoy this uh, reaction right here. And I hope I also will maybe see you in the future on my streams. Um, so um, if you don't want to like also miss them, hit the bell you know what i mean i don't want to just like tell you but you know what i mean um it's just so there were many people also like coming in and like the when we got to the fifth track and people said like well uh i didn't hit the bell and i missed it and wow and it was so anyways just like that but they still catched it and it was a great stream it was really fun and i'm going to do that more often so yeah also another thing i wanted to talk about is that my coffee requests are now back um, so if you want to uh, request a track or an album also tracks now um, you can look at those that it's in the description and also at the uh, main page of my youtube site so yeah on uh, Björk's Vunikura i'm feeling um, a decent to strong aid on this one great one that's kind of like it right here and um, i guess i'll see you at the next stream um also sorry about the little wait for this one right here but i had so many difficulties with cutting this one but anyways see you